so in this video, I, I actually took <laughs> bug. Bugs are everywhere. Quit bugging me, bug. All right, so I took some video a while ago, and it was when the sheathing was still up, the insulation was still up. You can tell it was winter because I still have my winter beard on. Um, I didn't use it. I, I intended to use it earlier, uh, but I want to go back in time and show you what we did. So let's go back real quick and look at that. Right now, and I got a lux meter with me, and I have this with me because the PAR sensor that we installed not long ago, that's photosynthetically absorbable radiation sensor, this little guy right here. He's telling us we're about three times short the amount of light than what we need. Now I've done some research and LEDs put off a little kind of funky kind of light so the sensors get all messed up. That's why we have a PAR sensor. Now I'm going to look at it with a LUX meter as well. LUX measures the amount of light coming through a certain area. So just right now where we're standing, we have roughly 4,000 LUX. Underneath of the light, we have roughly 40,000 lux. Those numbers are rounded up just to make it easy. So right about 4,000 lux out here. And 40,000. So the sun just came out and the lux went up to roughly 6,000 lux. Roughly 60,000 lux. <coughs> so now we need to go check out uh, the books, see what the books say as far as lights go. I think what we got going on is I have calculations done that say we have enough light for the microgreens, that's why they're doing very well. But as far as the big plants go, I think we're going to be running a little short on light. Might be some custom LEDs in our future. Okay, now I'm over on lane three, which is north of lane two. So I expect that we have a little bit less light up here just because of where the sun is at in relation to everything. The sun sits over here. So just in the open, I have 4,000 lux. That's pretty much the same as the first reading over on lane two. And then in the light, roughly 50,000 lux. So it's different, but not much different. 4,000 lux out. Roughly 60,000 lux in. Directly under the light, it's 60,000 lux. As you move out, it drops off almost exponentially and ends at 4,000 lux. That's a big drop. <coughs> so this whole thing just screams that this type of light, really it needs to be a long light, or even better, it just needs to be a light that goes here. Get rid of the motor, save some electricity, and add more LED lights. I think that's what we want to do. We got the lighting sensors in so we could really make sure that, you know, I don't want to just over design it and spend money that we don't need to. So I'm kind of happy that we went small and now we're going to have to increase it a little bit. Um, but that does create some problems. First, the good news, the microgreens are thriving in this environment. And that's because in their vegetative state, that, that's, you know, when they're just small like this, they don't need a lot of light. So the microgreens, they're doing awesome. They're doing great. In fact, here, let me show you. Here we go. Look at those. They're just doing great. In fact, the lights, the lights are turned off for the microgreens. They're not even on. There we go. Make sure you can still see. So the problem, and you can see here, this is kale. And the kale's coming up. Uh, we have a cable management problem. Uh, that, in fact, let me go show you the cable management uh, solutions that we've come up with so far. So all in all, I'm actually not convinced that this is the right solution. There's awful lot of calibration that has to take place between the length of the cable, where to put the zip ties, put the wing, and then you got that mess up there still. 
So originally I thought I was going to be done tonight and I'll just go with this solution, but I think I actually need to wait for the more expensive solution to show up. Uh, it's actually built for this, uh, so we'll see if it's worth its weight in gold, as they say. So it's doing a funky curl. Barring finding a cable management solution that actually works, uh, lighting is a problem. Uh, this kale, you can see, it's very tall and skinny. And based on the research that we've done and the people we've had come over and consult with us, that means that they're reaching up for the sky, trying to get more light. And the sensors that we have tell us that exact same thing, is that uh, based on those measurements I took, we're about three times short the amount of light we need for when they're actually past the vegetative state and they're really starting to grow uh, and produce fruit, whether that's a vegetable or an actual fruit. It doesn't matter, it's just called fruiting. Here, here we are looking at the database, and uh, don't pay attention to some of these other sensors here over here. I'm still working on making sure they're working correctly, but the PAR sensor is working correctly. And the measurements that you use, uh, the units of the measurements, like inches, feet, centimeters, meters, etc., uh, is moles per meter squared per day. And based on our research, we want to be somewhere between, I think it's like 17 up to 30 moles per meter squared per day. And right now we're sitting at 6.8. So at a minimum, we need to increase by a factor of three to get us up into this green here. Uh, and that's, this particular graph shows us the entire day's worth. If we go down here, this is why sensors are so important. Okay, uh, here we actually have the history we can see that during the day, PAR goes up. This is 200, roughly 200 micromoles per meter squared per second. Uh, so I'm converting that. Uh, this is still too low, but here you can get an idea. You know, at night there's no light, and then the lights turn on in the morning, uh, and then you have the sun uh, working as well. So that's where we're at. That's why I say a factor of three uh, low. So. <coughs> Let's go back a little bit further in time as well. Originally, we put these lights in, uh, and I made the mistake. Uh, this is me owning my mistake. I was doing calculations for the vegetative state, not for the flowering, and that was a big no-no. Um, that's going to that's gonna cause quite a bit of consternation here. So we had thought we were saving money and getting the solution we needed by getting a light motor. So this thing moves back and forth in the LED light, the grow light. We've talked about it before in different videos, but these grow lights, they're really optimum for growing in small areas, mostly for the marijuana uh, business, the trade there, uh, because they grow in small areas. Uh, so they need a small light that produces what they need, and they can raise and lower it on just a small area. But we have a 44-inch wide bed here that needs light, and we want to pack this thing full of vegetables. This is, bare, this is not packed enough. So we had this light motor, we had this LED light, we can raise and lower it, but really it just stays raised. And it has heat fans on it, which consume electricity. This motor consumes electricity, and it's not producing enough light for this entire bed. So I believe it's time that we start talking about a custom LED solution. Um, all the other lights take too much power, they're off the table. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they all um, take way too much power. So what we should do is have a single light, not a moving light. We need to get rid of this motor, uh, and we need to get rid of all the excess stuff that would be in a normal LED light that you get for a small space grow. We have lots of space. Um, the only thing I think we need to be really concerned with is just thermal consistency throughout uh, probably aluminum backing that we would use uh, for this lamp that we would need. What I'm thinking is a reflector back and a series of lights, LEDs down the middle, mounted on uh, aluminum bars or aluminum plating, uh, thin sheeting, um, maybe having some fins on the back side of it for heat dissipation, but no active cooling, just passive, totally passive. In the summertime, which is fairly short for us, less than six months out of the year, um, heating, it's probably about 85 in here, 90 right now. It's very humid, uh, so those considerations need to be brought up. But a majority, six months of the year, we're in cold weather, or perfect weather, uh, meaning that it's like 70 degrees outside and almost 70 degrees in here. Um, 
So we don't need a lot of active cooling. And in the winter time, that heat coming off will just help heat the lane. So that's great. As long as the lane's insulated, that heat goes to a place we could use it. So I'm happy about that. So if you know of a place that would sell the LED lights like what I need, this is a 12 foot run, uh, and we need to light 44 inches and um, be able to vary the height as it, as it grows. So those are the three main requirements that I have. And the lighting is just your basic PAR lighting requirement uh, for plants. We're not going to grow anything really exotic, so just basic greens and you know tomatoes or uh, peppers, stuff like that. So that's the lighting problem.